Crash Tag Team Racing, released for the PS2, GameCube, PSP and Xbox, was the last game developed before the redesign with Crash of the Titans and Man of the Mutant. And for the record, I quite liked Crash of the Titans. Man of the Mutant, however, was a complete letdown. But anyway, Crash Tag Team Racing sells itself in the title as a racing game, but it's also a platformer as well. Yes, racing and platforming. I'll explain in a bit. The story starts with Crash driving with Coco and Crunch being chased by Cortex Engine and Nina. They end up crashing at a racing park owned by Ebenezer Von Clutch who has chosen them to help him find the park's power gems and his black hat gem before he dies. As a reward, he offers a deed to the park to whoever returns the gems. So, if I win, you'll hand over the deed to this amusement enterprise? No questions asked? The story is basically paper thin and can easily be used for a Saturday morning cartoon. But being a game aimed for kids is not necessarily a bad thing. There are several hidden clips throughout the game showcasing the same cartoon-like humour like being crushed by a tree or blown up, and others with Crash being more of a jackass than he is in any other game. Like I said before, the game is split in two, racing and platforming. Platform is what you'll do a lot of at the start of the game by exploring the park, talking to other characters and collecting Wumpa coins. Which makes sense because I don't think they'll accept Wumpa fruit as a form of currency. You'll unlock new areas to explore after finding a hidden power gem, but you'll need a certain amount of power crystals to access the power gem which can be won in racing challenges found in each area. This is where the game shines. The game has a gimmick where you can join, or clash as it were, into other races to either mandatory or drive you and the former opponent into first place. If you run out of ammo or just get bored of your partner, you can split at any time and take first place for yourself. Much like Mario Kart, you can pick up items to attack your opponents with like a screaming fireball, a chicken or a monkey with a stick of dynamite strapped to it. The racing challenge is split into five categories. Racing, which is self-explanatory. Fast Lap, which is a time trial. Crashinator, where you crash into obstacles. Run and Gun, where you man the turret and shoot down targets, and Rolling Thunder, which is like Run and Gun but you're shooting at other races. Winning any of these will award you a Wumpa Coins and Power Crystals. There are also unlockable costumes, cars and minigames like a shooting range, bowling alley, battle arenas or stunt challenges where you score points by pulling off tricks in the air with your car. Yeah, I don't get it either but it's actually pretty fun. Aside from the character and car models, the graphics seem to be all over the place. Most areas have a bright and colourful mood to them. Again, much like a cartoon. As for the music, well, it's bad. It's still some drowned out people singing which gets on your nerves, but there are one or two jingles which are quite catchy. The voice acting is pretty good too. The characters say some pretty funny stuff, but it brings up another problem where, during a race, not one character can shut their mouth for five fucking seconds. Despite its shortcomings, this is probably the best post Naughty Dog Crash game I've played. True, the platforming feels a bit loose and the AI can be a douche at times, but it's still better than Nitro Car and Twin Sanity combined. There's plenty to unlock, multiple difficulty settings which adds to the replay value, and most racing challenges can be played up to 8 players. If you consider yourself a Crash fan or a casual racing gamer, and you haven't played this game, I recommend you do. It'll be worth it. I rate this game. 7.8 out of 10.